Brian Spielborgs of MLB Network Radio. Spilly, good morning. Good morning. So if in the background you hear dogs barking and kids screaming, it's because you are right in the middle of morning, uh, our morning routine. So oh, it's a crunch uh, time. About to take, yeah, it's crunch time. My wife is already uh, rolling her eyes at me early, so it's off to a good start. Well, we're glad that you're cutting into the, to the uh, schedule to make some time with us. And I know it's important to you for a couple reasons, because uh, you want to hit as many of these avenues as possible to advocate for your friend and former teammate Todd Helton as a Hall sure. of Famer. Not that you need to do it for us because we're both completely on board. And it's good news in terms of, uh, of Ryan Thibodeau's tracker too, Spilly, because it looks like Helton's campaign is working and it, and it uh, probably is going to land him in the building this year. Well, and I think a couple things there. I mean, Larry Walker getting into the Hall of Fame a couple of years ago really, really kind of helped the, the cause for Todd Helton and playing at Coors Field. I think what, what, often gets overlooked is the OPS numbers on the road. If you start digging into Todd Helton on the road OPS, he's better than Ryan Sandberg. He's better than Tony Gwynn. I, I think also if you extrapolate all the numbers that he put up in that time frame, because played at altitude often gets, you know, we, we say, oh, you played on the moon. Yeah, but what does it do to your body? Think about this, Harold and Matt. This is the part that was so crazy. If you look at Todd Helton, He's third all-time in doubles by a first baseman. The two first basemen ahead of him are Albert Pujols and Miguel um, Miguel Cabrera. And you know what Miguel Cabrera and Albert Pujols had? DH at bats. Do you know how many at bats that Todd Helton had in his career as a DH or starts? Two. Two starts it. And so you could wow. probably could have extended his longevity uh, at Coors Field because of the altitude and the wear and tear of the body if he had those at-bats as a DH. So to me, he's a surefire Hall of Famer. You can get into the wins above replacement. You can get into wins of uh, the War 7, or you can get into the Jaws number. And all those numbers tell you Todd Helton's a Hall of Famer. All right, a couple things real quick, Ryan, and then I'm going to ask you a question. But one, I remember Tony Gwynn talking about this guy's one of the greatest hitters I've ever seen. Tony Gwynn endorsed him like that. And when Todd took over at the Rockies, he replaced Andres Galarraga, who was rolling at the time. I mean, you think about that, the move they made. I remember them making that move, and you're going, you're replacing Galarraga? What's going on here? So as we look at these numbers up here, I want you to tell me, when you knew Todd Helton was different than the rest of us. Two strikes. I mean, when it got to two strikes, Helton would grind at bats like you've never seen before. The fact that Helton has more walks then strikeouts tells you something. And a little side story, Todd Elton used to go sit in the office with Don Baylor and tell Groove, why am I not playing today? And Groove would say, like, there's the big cat. He's like, I don't care. I can hit this guy. And part of what Todd was doing was he said he didn't really quite believe that he should be starting over the big cat, but he wanted that as a confidence because he needed to know that he could compete at this high of a level. So Two strikes in the two strike approach for Helton is what really separated him to a level that, that very few hitters ever got to. Hit almost 260 for his career with two. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean. Was, was there a game that you remember looking back where he just went off or a ball he hit or something like that when you guys were scuffling and here comes Todd Helton? My favorite moment in my career of my career is not a moment that I had. It was for Todd Helton back in 2007. We were in the middle of September and we're facing Saito in the second game of the game against the Dodgers. Uh, Matt Holliday had a base hit to right. It was the first hit we had off Saito the entire year. Two strikes, Helton hits this walk-off home run. That's the famous walk-off where, where Helton's actually showing emotion. And I think that was my favorite moment because if you got a chance to know Todd, which I did off the field, he was personable, he was there for you, he would take you and your family out. He just was Todd. And that was the first time I saw Todd's like true emotion come out of his body. He shared it with his teammates. He shared it with the fans. And it felt like he was part of this group of guys that were now there to support and be part of a team together. Um, so by far, that was my favorite moment in my history of playing the game was Todd Helton's walk off against Saito. So I want to ask you about your thoughts on the rest of the ballot. But first, I'm, I'm curious, do you, uh, do you talk, do you keep in touch with Todd often? And is he, is like this on his mind at all? Because look, there's a lot of guys that just kind of ignore it until the phone call, call comes or not. And then there are some who are paying attention to the tracker. Where does Todd rank there? 
I, you know, I talk to Todd. We, we text each other. I mean, he's not the greatest at texting back and forth. You, you got to get him when he's not out there fishing or hunting. But, you know, he's involved with his with his kids and, and watching his daughter go to college and all this stuff. But, yeah, he's involved. I mean, how can he not be curious about your case to get into Cooperstown? He yeah. would be the first, like, drafted by the Rockies, stuck with one organization the entire time. He is truly a Rocky. And if he gets in, that just means so much to the Colorado Rockies organization, franchise, the C-17 and now that know that it would be in Cooperstown forever, that's that that would mean a lot to not just Todd, but to all of us. So I, I want to ask you this. You know, he replaced – he was ahead of Peyton Manning at Tennessee at quarterback. <laughs> yeah. yeah. When was the first time you learned that, and how often did Todd ever talk about that? So he didn't talk about it too often, but if you would ask about it, he would tell you when he was in uh, high school and when he started playing football, he was known as the ice pick because he was also a safety and he would just, he was a skinny safety and would just drive into people. So my <laughs> nickname for Todd was the ice pick. And, you know, he would talk about football, but there was a little bit of a football edge that he would carry with them, you know, basically telling you like, stop being, stop being soft or, you know, it doesn't matter if you're tired, like just go out there and grind it away. But he would throw football every now and then and you'd see why he ended up playing uh, football. But, I mean, the, the relationship between him and Peyton was pretty special. We got Peyton coming into the clubhouse many times, um, hey, and so that's pretty neat. Let me ask you about another name on the ballot, and this is going to take you down another road here, I hope, because you got another friend and former teammate, Matt Holliday, who's on the ballot this year. And um, despite the huge years in St. Louis, you know, I'll remember Matt as a Rocky first and as a Cardinal second. The slide. The, you know, the 07 slide where he never got there. That kind of stands out Come in my on. mind. Never he got there. Still not never got, you know it. You know it. He never got there. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. What's the, what's the question? You're right. Because it, it, Rockies would have won that game anyway. There's nobody out. So they're, uh, they were I, a team of destiny. Guy. Doesn't here's, matter. Here's what's the question? question? Here's the question. How – how does it make you feel as a guy who is still really in good shape, who's not an old man by any stretch, to go to the wedding of the son of a former teammate, and that that kid is now on the verge of superstardom himself? It's got to be unusual. Uh, I mean, being there was was you know it was a, it was a treasure for for me mentally. At, at times, I kind of joked it felt like I was at a prom because I can't believe that Jackson, who I've known since he was a little baby. Uh, is is married and I love him. I love the family. I love Leslie. I love Matt. The, it was a great, wonderful party in Florida. It was special. It was cool to watch his his brother Ethan give a little speech about Jackson and, and what he means. It was great. And you know, like you you start seeing some of the offspring of people that you played with. And I'm sure Harold, you saw this with Ken Griffey Jr. or some other players that you that you played with. That now their kids are in the big leagues. It's pretty cool because you realize that, that, that they they had that dream when they were a kid. Like when you were in the clubhouse with them, they could picture themselves because it became natural to them that they wanted to do that. And Matt was was such a good guiding light for Jackson. Did, so you know, we, you know, we could have been happier. A That's lot of awesome. times Matt had to do his work. He had to go take BP, fly balls, everything else. And Jackson was probably watched by other players. Were you one of those guys you throw in BP, he hung out shagging with you? Yeah, oh yeah. We, I had to go give, you know, throw balls, wiffle balls, all that stuff. And then when he got older, you know, there was times where holiday, Matt would go like, still, you get to pick up those baseballs in the cage. I'm, like, I'm not going to pick up your balls. He's like, we'll get a steak after dinner. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, all right, well, I'll pick up the baseballs. I'll, babys I'll babysit Jackson for a steak. I'm good at that. Hey, what about the rest of the ballot, Spilly? And before we kind of get off of this, like, who else do you feel really strongly about this year? First year eligible or returnee? You know what? I, I think Gary Sheffield's case is really grown on me over the last couple of years. And I think the disappointment that I've had is with the writers. There, there's no question. Last year, uh, I was pretty vocal about watching how 11 writers were willing to vote for PED users specifically, which ended up hurting Todd Helton because he was 11 votes short. I think this year, as I'm watching some voters taking guys that they voted for a year ago and taking them off this year, doesn't make a lot of sense to me, especially if you have room on your list. I saw one guy say, well, I can I can add Gary Sheffield to my list again next year. No, you can't. He's in his 10th and final year. I also think the aspect of Sheffield, similar, 500 home runs, 
more walks and strikeouts. But he was very vocal in the last couple of years about PDs and how he might have been part of the change in, in steroid testing in Major League Baseball. And I do believe it made a mistake with Balco. And I do believe he used it uh, based on how he said it with not knowing what it was actually doing to him. And I, and I, as I watch that people are willing to vote for Manny Ramirez and Alex Rodriguez, people that hmm. in Alex Rodriguez's case was never contrite about it and actually lied about it multiple times. I can't stand by that. That's a hard pass for me. But when it comes to Gary Sheffield, I feel like he might have been one of the first whistleblowers in the sport and deserves a place in Cooperstown. Interesting take on that. Uh, oh. We cannot let you go without just at least giving you some scenics of your beloved Santa oh. Barbara. Because uh, for those of you who listen to Loud Outs and hear the constant references to Spilly's hometown, this is why he talks about it so much. It I'd be bragging on that too. Possibly man. the most beautiful place on God's green earth. Okay, go to Los Arroyos if you want Mexican food in Santa Barbara and Brophy Brothers in the marina right around happy hour to go watch the sunset, and you'll thank me later. Okay, good stuff, man. Uh, we appreciate the visits, Billy. Thanks. You can catch Loud Outs uh, with Ryan on MLB Network Radio, and uh, thanks again for the visit, man.